morning, everybody. For those of you that don't know, uh, I'm Rodney Nepp, and this is uh, Rita Nepp, my sister, and uh, B was our grandma. And uh, we have a few memories and things to share about her this morning, and um, we're going to start with the obituary. B was born February 13th, 1943, in Wellman, Iowa the daughter of Clyde and Ollie Brenneman Hirschberger. She attended Iowa Mennonite School on August 12, 1961. She was united in marriage to Edward Knepp at the West Union Mennonite Church. Her first few years of marriage were spent in Evanston, Illinois at the one, in the 1W service. B was a farmer's wife and was a cook for the University of Iowa for over 20 years. She was a member of East Union Mennonite Church B was known for her famous cinnamon rolls and were gifted to many. Her door was always open and it was not uncommon for the visitors to drop by unannounced and stay for a meal. B enjoyed cooking, playing the organ, listening to music, scrapbooking, and spending time with her family. Survivors include five children, Randy, Kathy Nipp of Oklahoma, Lynn, Amy Nipp of Iowa, Brad, Tracy Knepp of Arkansas, Darla, Eddie, Trio of Australia, Gina, Wally Almquist of Illinois, 18 grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren, and four siblings, Elaine Cole, Herb Hirschberger, Larry Hirschberger, and Linda Cole. Proceeding, proceeding B and death were her parents, her husband, Ed, four children, Diane, Eddie, Ryan, and Jody, and her brother, Cecil Hirschberger, Beatrice B. Yvonne Hirschberger Nepp, 79, of Fayetteville, Arkansas, formerly of Afton, Oklahoma, and Kelowna, Iowa, died Tuesday, August 16, 2022, at the Circle of Life Hospice House in Springdale, Arkansas. A memorial fund has been established for the family's use. The music that's playing today is special that we're singing and, and that we're listening to in that it's music that grandma loved and music that we remember her by. There's a lot of things I could say. There's two things that always stood out to me about grandma, her positive attitude and her joyful personality. She always found the good in things when I would go over and talk to her about a rough week that I was having. She always had a smile showing her joy. Just a simple conversation could always get me looking on the bright side of things. That's always this, something that came to my mind about Grandma, too, was her happiness and her zeal for life and her hard work and her really good cooking. I have this one memory of when I was really little and she and I were riding back in her car, in her car back to her house from somewhere. And I don't know what we was going to do when we got there, but I knew there would be snacks. There was a fair amount of humor to her life as well. She seemed to get into a lot of circumstances that were pretty hilarious to the family. Even just a simple trip to the grocery store could be pretty comical. When she explained that she slipped on a wet floor and landed dead center on a full gallon jug of milk and exploded and milk went everywhere, I can only imagine what that looked like. Yeah, my husband, Jason, tells me that all the uh, hilarious happenings that I seem to find myself in, that it's, it's got to be due to genetics, and I'm pretty sure that he's not wrong about that. <clears throat> she somehow managed to be really good at calling the pregnancies of her uh, great-grandbabies as well, probably because she asked so often, <laughs> and she loved babies. We went out to eat one evening for Grandma's birthday. It would have been... February of 21, and Grandma said to my wife, Heather, she said, Heather, you're pregnant. We diverted from the conversation and just said, oh, no, when we actually had just found out ourselves that we were expecting our second little girl, Briar, and we hadn't told a soul yet, and she did almost the exact same thing to my sister Reed and Jason on their first little girl, Skyland. That's another thing. Um, I don't ever recall Grandma being afraid 
to be exactly who she was. That was, um, it was mostly a good thing, um, but it also kept us on our toes. <laughs> One of my last memories of her um, was when Grandma lived at Grandwood, that assisted living there in Oklahoma. Our church group would go and sing for her sometime, for the, for the older people there sometimes. And it would have been the last time she heard us sing. She was there in the crowd, and she, we had just got done, and she hollered out that she said, Rita is, and I was like, oh no, like, what's she going to say? <laughs> and she said, my granddaughter. <laughs> And I was like, okay, good, just that. <laughs> then there was the cinnamon roll story. Now, Grandma has always been known for making the best cinnamon rolls known to man, in my opinion. And I think anyone who knows her would agree with me. Now, this story is a little vague because I was real little, only about four years old, when we lived in Louisiana. And Grandma and Grandpa came to visit. And I believe Darla, Gina, and Jody came as well. And Grandma made her cinnamon rolls. And I, I don't remember much, but I do remember taking a bite. And these were terrible. Something was terribly wrong with these cinnamon rolls. They weren't good. And I just remember everyone laughing, and I wasn't sure why. Well, come to find out, uh, Grandma, in her efforts of making these, um, Rather than dra grabbing the jar full of a uh, canister full of sugar, she grabbed the uh, canister of salt. <laughs> As a lot of you know, um, Grandma B was pretty much the only grandparent that Rod and I ever had. Uh, my mom's parents died when she was a kid, and so we never met them. And then Grandpa died when I was two, so I don't really remember him either. Um, so yeah, Grandma was pretty big deal to us. And as a kid, I remember just begging my parents to somehow convince Grandma to move down to Oklahoma. That's when she lived in Iowa here, and so she could be down there with us. But it never happened. Um, I know I had even thought of one time of just thinking of, you know, going to a different school or something and going up here to Iowa so I could just live with Grandma, you know, but anyway, never worked out. Um, until 2015, the day finally came, and she, she moved down and was able to live with us for a little while at my parents' house. But unfortunately, it wasn't long until her health declined and took a toll on her pretty quickly. But I will forever be grateful that we could spend those last few years with Grandma. <laughs> I wanted to talk about a song we sang just a little bit ago, uh, Blessed Assurance. The song says, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. I looked up just to see for sure what it says about assurance. Uh, what's the definition of assurance? And it says it's a, a positive declaration intended to give confidence or a promise. There's a lot of things in this world that we can go to to find assurance. But I'm thankful that the assurance that Jesus gave us is the greatest assurance we could ever receive. When we put our faith in him and devote our life to him, he promises us an eternity in a place far better than anything this world has to offer. I got a little scripture here in uh, Matthew six nineteen through 21. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Grandma and Grandpa would have been married 61 years on August 12th, just a little over a week ago. But I'm thankful today at this anniversary that Grandma had that blessed assurance. And 
she gets to meet Jesus and live with him forever and be reunited with Grandpa and all of her children that went before her. When Grandma was slipping away from us in those last days, leaving this world behind, um, I told her that I loved her and I promised her that I would, uh, that we would pass on all the good things that she taught us. The matriarch of our family has left our side, but her legacy carries on.